two most performing narratives of previous cycle, L1s and meme coins. Let's actually talk about them. Let's actually talk about how you can outperform each and every influencer you are following and you are watching yourself. Let's actually figure this out because we already saw several examples. We already saw several examples with Bobo, right? We saw some examples with other meme coins on certain chains. Let's actually figure out how we can combine two of these narratives and outperform each and every person in the marketplace. And you might say, oh, Bob is on a 50% correction. I just sold my thing to rebuy letter. Not gonna make it. Let's go through two main narratives of this cycle, L1s and meme coins, and two main narratives of previous cycle as well, L1s and meme coins. Let's actually try to figure out where Solana liquidity is going to move into next and in the end of this video i will actually respond to the question are we getting a pre-halving deep pre-halving two months crazy correction where we would be seeing bitcoin as low as forty thousand dollars of course we don't have millions hundreds of millions of people sidelined at this stage still right like this video, subscribe to this channel, and let's actually start. Before we start, I would like to remind that I'm giving away $300 in each video. In order to be eligible for giveaway, what you need to do? You go on each and every video, you go into description, right? You click on the link and you see my page. You can receive up to 30,000 sign up bonus, depending on how much money you would deposit and how much money you would also be trading with. Not a lot of people actually have this type of sign up bonus, right? After that, exchange would ask you to complete the KYC. You would have to deposit at least a hundred bucks. And then you go on my Discord. On my Discord, you basically just need to go into the channel called join VIP. And here you would be able to fill out this form, a very, very simple form, BitGet UID and Discord name. Two things, if all the conditions are met, you will be added to my private VIP Discord and you would also be eligible for giveaways. Here is one of the calls from my private Discord. Happened on 9th of March. I believe it's a good time to loan AVEX as well currently. Enter something midterm with 3 to 4x leverage as well. This call was given when AVEX was at $40. I did not loan it myself and currently I'm FOMOing into actually loan into AVEX as well, because I think short term it would be doing very, very well. But let's continue with the topic of our video. Two most performing narratives of previous cycle, L1s and meme coins. Most performing means that if you put certain money into these narratives early in the cycle, you are pretty much making largest gains. And it's very, very interesting that both of these narratives, they basically searched up like crazy. I'm speaking about market caps. They went to crazy market caps. Dogecoin was around 90 billion market cap. BNB, Binance Smart Chain, Coin was pretty much at 40 billion market cap. Not talking about Ethereum, not talking about Solana in that cycle, not talking about everything else. One thing I wanted to show you as well is that currently Solana has the market cap of 90 billion dollars. And we see it's going down already. Very, very interesting situation. We need to understand, we need to stay ahead of the market. We need to figure out where Solana liquidity is going into next. And I told you about that. I told you about this situation more than 10 days ago. And before that, I was telling about this as well. Solana liquidity most likely will be going into AVEX. And the current pump of AVEX from 40 bucks, from 35 bucks to 60 bucks is pretty much market front running this event because all the digits, they would be seeing that their Solana holdings, they're taking profits from the meme coin trading into Solana, that their Solana holdings are actually going down for some reason. They would be looking to transfer some of this money into a similar chain where they can also trade some meme coins. We remember that after Solana meme season in November, December, we had a meme season on AVEX as well. Definitely a shorter one, definitely a smaller one, but still returns were very, very nice for people that were able to position themselves early to front run the flow of liquidity. It's installed, it's injected in the mind frame of the market participants currently that Solana profits should be going into AVEX. If a lot of people are talking about something, it might as well be happening, despite the fact that on the market, if a lot of people think that one thing is going to happen, usually it does not happen. 
which is very, very interesting as well. Meme coins, we talk a lot about them on this channel and you know my strategy. I actually don't trade meme coins. I invest into meme coins. I buy blue chips on different chains. When people are saying that the chain is dead or nothing is going to happen with the meme, I capitalize heavily and then I hold because I understand that we just have seen wave one and more waves are actually coming in the future. I'm willing to see my home run with the tokens and to see my home runs, I need to give space. I need to actually give time for my tokens to run. Point number two, this time is different, right? We have a bunch of different narratives. We have gaming, we have AI, we have BRC20s, and we definitely have rotation game on a bit of different scale because attention of players on the market, it actually getting shifted from one thing to another. It, it almost feels like a herd of ships that are being transferred from one thing to another, to the third one, to the first one. And people who are in these narratives, they're laying out traps they're inviting ships, come here, come here, and then they cut their fur. And then they're killing some of them for meat as well. And this herd of ships is going from one thing to another, to the third one, to the fourth one. And more and more ships are actually dying. But new ones, new ones are actually coming in. The key is to monetize on something like this, is to position yourself before, before this herd of ships would essentially come into your narrative and be able to hold, be able to understand that if something is surging up currently, if something is at the highest right now, in the first place, understand what is your upside when everyone is talking about the thing and when everyone is saying that something is very, very great, your upside is limited, you don't have exit liquidity, you don't have the buyer to actually buy from you. If, if you would be buying something on which everyone is screaming that it's something great, it's something awesome and things like that. And secondly, you need to position yourself beforehand in the certain narrative. Therefore, once this herd of ship, once the attention would shift onto your narrative, you would be able to capitalize the most. And also you need to understand market stages because if you saw your narrative playing out already and you're taking profits and you're looking to reposition, stop. Your narrative will run again. We, are, we just entered second half of the bull market. Yes, we're in the bull market from December 2022. Position yourself correctly. Position yourself beforehand, capitalize on the liquidity, hold through market stages, understand where it's going to be the final stage for your thesis, for your tokens, and take profits and leave the best, best strategy for this cycle, for this run as well. And people who are making profits on Solana, Solana is not going to pump always. All these meme tokens, they're not going to pump always as well. Obviously, some of the liquidity will stay there. And I do believe that some of the meme game on Solana will be continuing through the cycle as well, despite the fact no one cared about meme coins on Solana in January. They were just going down, dumping down. And it's very, very easy currently to believe that Solana meme coins would be pumping and surging up through the whole cycle. Let's see what the future will actually have to us. But nothing goes up infinitely. If something is going up, people are making money, they would be taking these profits and they're gamblers. They do understand we're still quite early in the cycle. They will be repositioning them somewhere in different narratives. And people who were able to position themselves before, they would essentially capitalize on these profits because all of these profits would be coming into their pockets, right? This time is different, right? That's to the thesis that L1s and meme coins are not going to outperform each and every narrative out there on the marketplace. We do obviously have gaming, we have AI, we have ordinals. These things, they should also have the flows of liquidity and their liquidity injections through the cycle as well. We do already have a bunch of candidates on winning L1 race at this stage. I would like to go through them and I would specifically like to go through upside for each and every token, specifically speaking from this moment of time, today, 18th of March. Current candidates, Solana. Everyone is screaming on Solana. Solana is great. Solana is a global casino. Very, very nice. What is your upside? What is your upside when everyone is talking how great Solana is? You should have bought when everyone was saying it's that. That it is CAM token, it's a VC token and things like that. Your upside right now is quite limited. I would not be suggesting to get into Solana. 
it will definitely cool off. We will be waiting for cool off. We will be waiting what type of numbers we would be seeing on the cool off. Maybe 150, maybe 170. Maybe it won't be cooling off for much time because it's strong talking. It's actually a very, very nice talking for bull market with all the speculation and with all the memes. And if meme season will pretty much continue, it, it will be it will be the first entry point for a bunch of liquidity for every Joe's from the market to go into Solana Casino to spend to lose the money there with scams, always pumping dumps, always other meme tokens, right? Therefore, there would be more and more liquidity on Solana. It would be very, very interesting if we would actually see Solana just surging through the whole market because of this reason, because of the fact it might become the entry point for people to gamble in crypto. Let's see if it's actually going to happen. Right now, I think that nothing can grow infinitely. Right now, I think that we should be seeing a correction. And right, th and right now, I think that on the correction, liquidity should be flowing out in some other things, at least a part of liquidity, right? From these levels, I would not be recommending to buy Solana at this stage. It's already at 90 billion market cap. We have Ethereum at like how much? 360? 2, 3, 4x. For this cycle is something that Solana might be making from this level. So it's definitely not this dark horse opportunity anymore. It's definitely not the asymmetric upside at advantage at this stage. It's something that everyone talks about, something everyone recognizes. And me saying Solana instead of Soylana is your top signal for not to buy into it at this stage. Next thing is AVEX. It's definitely a niche one because from this point of view and from meme game, it's kind of similar to Solana because you can pretty much have the same casino on AVEX because of the reason, because of the fact that the transactions and fees are low there as well. And it's also EVM based chain, so it has a great compatibility with Ethereum. But the reason I'm saying it's a niche one, because it's basically because of the fact there are a bunch of gaming things that are happening on AVEX itself. You can actually create your own subnets. They are pretty much onboarding large Web2 games onto their blockchain already, which is very, very bullish for the chain because they're kind of doing it still, still early in the cycle. Avex pumped pretty nicely in October and November. Right now it's pumping. I do think that soon we should be seeing Avex pumping to 100 bucks at least. And once it would start to correct from that levels, all the liquidity from Avex pumping should start to go into the altcoins on Avex as well. Although we already see some of them doing pretty well. Five memes that Avex Foundation specifically told about that they're holding them, they're doing quite well. Joe, which is main DEX on Avex, is surging quite nicely as well. I would actually expect Avex to finally kick off gaming all season as well. With lower caps, the same one that, that we had in October, November, right? Because currently we saw some projects in gaming pumping up. Some things connected with Ethereum because Ethereum pumped as well. Some things connected with new launches and new games that actually launched. But Alex Gaming, it was not pumping much recently. Let's see what will happen with this ecosystem. Speaking of Alex, I don't think it's going to be a winning horse for this race of layer ones. However, despite that, it definitely has a very, very interesting niche down focused. None of the chains have something similar at this stage, which I think might be an unfair advantage for Avex. And with gaming, Avex would be surging up as well. If you believe in gaming and you pretty much understand at this stage that L1s are the winning narrative in the previous cycle and most likely will be in this one as well, it's a very, very great combination if you're bullish on gaming and you have L1s, you can add meme coins on top and that's your great, great cocktail. Moving forward, we have Ethereum and I also added really. A lot of people in the marketplace are currently speaking and saying that Ethereum is unusable. These fees, they're crazy already. They're surging up. Right now, it's like 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks to send a transaction already. It's not going to be used by anyone and it's very, very bad. And people are also saying that base will probably be doing well instead of Ethereum. Let me ask you a question. What is BASE in the first place? BASE is layer two on Ethereum. We do have a bunch of layer twos. We have Dimcon updates and a lot of people that are actually more bullish on Ethereum layer twos. But in order to use most of these layer twos, you would actually have to buy Ethereum in the first place. And most of the financial, most of the DeFi innovation is also happening on Ethereum because most of DeFi people, they're still on Ethereum. Whales are not comfortable. 
most of the whales are not comfortable to transfer their 20, 50, 100 million bags from Ethereum to something centralized like Solana. It was on Ethereum, it is on Ethereum, and it will continue to stay on Ethereum as well. They can just farm the DeFi protocols for the whole market and do nothing else, not participate in anything else. I do think that Ethereum will be doing very, very well, especially, especially if we are going to get our Ethereum ETF. And, and I know it's also a controversial opinion. I do think we might be getting one. I actually have something to congratulate you with. Following the senses of this reality, I feel like the scenario of World War III was actually pushed to the end of 2025 and 2026. I don't think we would be seeing World War III in this year. I believe they decided to cash out as hard as they can first and go through the whole bull market in stocks, in crypto, in other things as well. Let's actually see what's going to happen, but I do believe we are at least safe till the results of president election in the US. Ethereum is keen, it has real usage, real upside. DeFi is not going ever to move anywhere else. They need decentralization as well because it's DeFi, it's not SoiFi, all right? And DeFi is actually a very, very bullish narrative for this year as well because all of these institutions that are getting interested in crypto as well. They don't understand anything except finance. And once and if Ethereum ETF will be approved, man, it's just going to be so, so crazy. My Boba bag would be doing very, very well. Moving forward, we have Ethereum Layer 2, Arbitrum, Optimus, Manta, Starknet. A bunch of them are pretty much VC vaporware because they saw success of Matic, all of them are launching their own fundamental technical thing that will be working better than the other. Parallelized transactions, modular blockchain, it's all to get your money. It's all to actually take money from retail as well. That's, that's purest VCs pump and dumps. I do understand this, I'm willing to play. I think to a certain extent I would be winning. Speaking of Ethereum layer 2, we do have Arbitrum, which is largest token by total value locked, which is dumping like crazy currently, with all the unlocks and all the bad news speaking about unlocks from investors on Arbitrum and just crazy unlocks, 80% of the supply. I will show you something closer to the end of this video. I will show you how they are forcing you to sell, buying out things you are selling to pump the whole thing. Right after, I will tell you the truth. I will tell you the truth. I will tell you, I will show you screenshots. It's so, so crazy. It's so, so crazy what is happening. Largest total value locked, Arbitrum, two months before Ethereum ETF news is actually dumping. Man, it's crazy. It's crazy how this market is actually, what who are you trading against? Who are you playing against? You need to understand this. Base which also might be a candidate for winning blockchain layer 2. The main reason for that is because BASE is going to onboard a bunch of users in crypto and is specifically going to onboard the audience with the largest purchasing power, which are people who live in the US. Very, very nice sentiment, very, very nice entry point. Most of them, they will be directed to BASE chain right away. But I do believe, I do believe that market is front running the narrative. I do believe that we will have capitulation to time on some base memes. I hope for this scenario, honestly. I don't think that influencers would be able to focus the attention because this is kind of there as well and everyone understands it and it's kind of a common sense currently that base is something very, very bullish because Coinbase will be onboarding a bunch of people onto base, but man, I will be able to get my bread back. If not bread, then Tosh. We will see. We just seen, we just have seen a wave one. I think we should be seeing a correction on this thing as well. I think I will be able to get my entry after fading bread at 5 million market cap, right? Next thing is Tan. I've done pretty well on Redo. I've been using products of the founder of Telegram since like 2007, I think. It's how much at this stage? 17 years? I do think it has something that pretty much no one else in crypto actually have. One plus billion users. Even Coinbase, even Coinbase does not actually have something like this. Very, very interesting thing on the marketplace. 
one thing I'm thinking on is that upside might be quite limited at this stage because market cap of Tone is like 8 to 9 billion at this stage. If it would be able to pull out something like BNB, plus we will have more liquidity this cycle, maybe it will be able to reach 70 to 100 billion market cap, something like that. But I will show you what I am doing and how I am playing this L1's narrative to outperform each and every other person on the marketplace, which I think actually is quite smart because I'm focusing on exit liquidity, because I'm focusing on who would be buying my tokens from me closer to the end of the cycle. And it's also a very, very interesting thing that everyone is saying that we are still early and everyone is planning to sell at the end of the cycle and everyone is so smart, that's not going to happen. Market will fool everyone else one. Market will fool everyone once again. This is happening times and times again. People are definitely getting better. But I do think that something that most people are sure about will not be happening. Either we are still very, very early and this cycle will just be a crazy one and they will be taking profits too early. Therefore, they would be feeling huge FOMA once thing will surge up right after they will take profits. There would be a chance they would actually be re-entering and losing some of the money. Or it's going to be a very, very short cycle and World War 3 in August. Let's see what's actually going to happen. Too many people are speaking about things that we are second half of the bull market, or we are still early, or it's left translated cycle and things like that. Let's actually see how this thing is going to play out, right? SUI. SUI is something I was talking about for two months plus. Great use experience. I believe SUI is best risk reward in layer one tokens at this stage. Base is not there yet. You cannot buy base. Solana is out of the roof. I think it's three to four x. Um, I think it's three to four x max from these levels for, from the current market cap. If we will not be correcting heavily, Tone might be might be something, might be not. Because let's see what the team is actually going to do there. Sui, very very nice. VC pump and dump bubble. Pure bubble. They just created a great user experience. One interesting thing about Sui is that there is kind of a consensus currently that it's not very, very meme friendly chain, right? And I was thinking about this as well. And this type of statement actually blocked me from buying memes on Sui. Despite I think I bought something and I got rocked as well. Um, what's very, very interesting is that currently I'm thinking why I have in why I have this installed mind frame that Sui is not very, very meme friendly. And that the fact that no one is trading memes on Sui. I'm right now, I'm actually becoming more and more bullish on memes on Sui because of the fact that if it's because of the fact that if this mind frame is installed into my brain, it's definitely installed in your brain as well and in the brain of a bunch of people on the marketplace. And there might be a chance that this mind frame is a lie, it will be changing, and we will also have a meme season on Sui, which would pretty much mean that right now memes are at the bottom. Let's see what will be happening, but Sui is actually the darkest horse of this cycle. I think it's the best risk reward to actually be buying Sui. I think we would be seeing numbers for this blockchain already and I think it's going to do very very well. And smart digits on Solana, they're actually packing their profits into Sui at this stage. And I'm not saying this based on something I heard on the internet or read on Twitter, I'm saying this from insights, right? Others say, well, I don't know much about them and I'm not very, very qualified to talk on them at this stage. I think it's also VCs pump and dump, just cash grab, and there are a bunch of L1s like this already. I don't know much on Say, I'm not very bullish on Say, but it might be doing well because it's pretty much in the narrative of player ones and all these other things as well. Luxa. Luxa is actually something digging at this stage. And a reason I'm bringing it back because I was talking about Luxa quite a lot on my channel essentially is because I start to hear different things that. L1 should not be charging the commission, L1 should be doing something else, you should not be actually buying something through the wallet from the decks or things like that, it should be installed and being used easily right away like your profile on Instagram, right? And Luxa actually have it 
already. I'm also I'm also hearing some things as well that that developer run crypto projects. They are definitely focusing on changing something in the industry. And marketers, they're just here for money. They're looking to pump, they're looking to dump pretty much. And I believe, I know, Luxa is definitely a developer run project. Very, very interesting thing how the whole combination starts to combine in Luxa. Although it's definitely a risky bet, you're definitely risking just sitting in Luxa and see other things pumping and nothing happening for your Luxa token at the same time. I'm just seeing interesting narratives and interesting things forming about L1s, about all these things that Luxa pretty much already has. And it was specifically deliberately working to acquire them, to actually implement them on the platform. Very, very interesting situation. I might be looking to add some more on some dips if we would be essentially getting one and reposition maybe some of my profits into this L1 as well. Moving forward. We need to recognize dark horses. Market will eventually understand that asymmetric opportunity for things like Solana might already be diminishing. We are early on this thesis. The reason I'm saying that we are early on this thesis, although we are not the earliest, because Alex is surging up in anticipation from experienced market players that it should be pumping with the profits that should be coming from Solana. Other things that you might actually want to position yourself is something like Ethereum. Ethereum might be pumping with the profits from Alex and with Ethereum ETF, but Ethereum essentially has pumped already on Ethereum ETF news. Right now we're seeing a correction. I think it will continue further. There are some Ethereum layer 2s that you might want to position yourself on as well. Following the current narrative, following Ethereum ETF, Dinkin updates and all the great things that should be happening. And some of them, they even don't have token at this stage. But there are other ways how you can position yourself in these layer twos. And these other ways are actually connected with my strategy, outperforming each and everyone on this market with the combination of two most bullish narratives. And on blast. We are early on the thesis that Solana profits would be coming into AVEX. All the smart people, they already positioned themselves in AVEX. And I'm talking about Digens. I'm talking about Solana Digens that maybe it's the first cycle, they're making money, right? And at the end, and it's quite interesting how the market works because right now it actually gives them the opportunity to make money. But at the end, all this money most likely will be taken away from them. It's very, very interesting how this thing actually works. And sooner or later, they will understand that the Solana is dumping, Solana is correcting, and they would be looking to reposition into something else. And they will hear from their body that, hey, this is Alex. And there is black cock. I just bought a black cock and it up and it's up 3x, 4x already. Come and get some black cock as well. And they will be repositioning into Avex most likely as well. But they will be repositioning into the backs of people who understood this flow and this thing beforehand. That's why I'm saying that we are early, but we were really early when I called it the first time in my Discord and $40 per Avex token. Right now, smart people already position themselves in AVEX. Right now, the upside is already lower and they're expecting for this thing to happen. They're waiting to take profits of these Solana guys and take them into their backs, right? Moving forward, we have understand where Solana profits are coming to. I think it's going to be AVEX. Let's actually see. Understand upcoming catalysts for the chains. Layer 2s, SUI and Arbitrum unlocks, Blast airdrop, Ethereum ETF, BTC halving, and gaming run as well. All these catalysts should be taken into consideration when we're thinking about where the next flow is going, where the next, where the next flow of money is going to happen as well. I expect Alex, I expect gaming. After that, I expect Ethereum and everything about Ethereum layer 2s to do well. I'm, strate I'm strategically positioned in this thing as well. I'm also positioned in Arbitrum, a bunch of Ethereum layer 2s, and SUI as well. I am positioned following my thesis. One of the things that I actually wanted to tell you about Arbitrum, because let's actually check out the price of this token. Let's actually check out what has happened. $1.64, 62 even. People are selling Arbitrum and we have Captain Altcoin, Arbitrum price plummets 11% following major unlock, technicals signal more trouble ahead 
cupa holders. Man, you, I should probably close on all my loans on Arbitrum, sell on my Arbitrum tokens and wait and wait and probably wait for a better entry, probably wait lower because we should be seeing this correction and technicals, they're not great on Arbitrum and people are dumping and because people are dumping like this is they're dumping and that's why the price of the token actually going down already. But let's actually check out one thing. Let's actually check out transactions of market maker Winter Mute on Uniswap. <gasps> and what these guys are doing? They're buying Arbitrum in chunks at 1.6 and 1.7 dollars. <gasps> They're just crazy. How can this be happening? They're buying large, large portions of Arbitrum at these levels. What is happening? Why this is? Aren't they stupid? Don't they know that investors just got their unlocks and and all the influencers are talking about dumps and they're posting something on Twitter. So you would, you probably need to sell your Arbitrum. You probably need to you probably need to exit. You probably would be able to buy back lower, right? So crazy what is happening. Do you understand that there are people controlling the narrative? They have specific topic. They have specific reasons for controlling the narrative. The main thing why they want to control the narrative is to take your money. What they want to do, they do understand. They have these bullish catalysts, bullish events. They just had a Dinkan update. They just had a Dinkan upgrade. They needed people not to be bullish around this upgrade. Therefore, they created a narrative of Arbitrum unlocks, of VCs actually dumping. Don't buy Arbitrum. Don't buy it at any cost. It's going, it's actually going to dump. They will have Ethereum ETF. How do you think they will be using Ethereum ETF? During Ethereum ETF, they will be screaming about how Arbitrum is the best token on the market because they would need to create liquidity to take some of the profits from their positions. Do you understand that market makers actually often control the sentiment on the market? They can buy influencers. They can actually make them to post things that they need to post. And speaking about VCs, they just got their 80% unlocks, right, of the allocation of the tokens. And they were acquiring Arbitrum at $1 for the whole bear market, for the whole year, right? In order to dump it at 1.8, at 1.6. This is how VCs are working on this market. That's why they actually own this market, because they want to make 60% of the money and just leave, right? This is why they're in crypto. This is why they're in this unregulated space where they cannot be put in jail for insider trading, right? This is the only reason why they're here. Man, you need to understand what is happening. You need to understand it's just a giant manipulation. On the course of two months, Arbitrum will be surging like crazy. You will be hearing things about Arbitrum from each and every influencer you're following, from each and every Twitter account. Right now, they're specifically creating fun. They're specifically creating bad news. They're specifically creating this fight about this is dumping on the unlocks. <laughs> so you would sell your tokens. In parallel, they are buying your tokens from you in order to pump the price moving forward in order to take the profits on these tokens during around Ethereum ETF events. And even, and even further in the cycle, I do believe that Arbitrum is actually going to be one of the best performing tokens of this cycle. Remember this moment, download this video, save it on your hard drive, open it up in a year from now, 18th of March, 2025, and say, Stan, you were so fucking right on Arbitrum. It costs $25 right now. You were so fucking right. I know, I see the future. Moving forward, point number six, how to outperform each and every influencer with their layer one bet. Combination of most two performing narratives, what might be more bullish? Well, if you're following me, you probably know my strategy. I'm not a meme coin trader. I don't trade them. I might be digging because I'm buying meme coins very, very low. I was holding my picture for the I was holding my picture of the bear for eight months. My picture of the bear is not doing well currently. It's actually correcting 50%, 60%, 70%. I'm losing hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars on a daily basis. Do you see anything changing in me? Well, the reason to this is the fact that I'm physiologically different from you. I'm a, I'm a psychopath. That's why I don't feel anything. But despite the fact 
You should be behaving exactly like this because the only thing I care about is the amount of tokens that I would have at the end of the cycle. And I also do know that I'm not a trader and no one on the market can sell the tops and buy back lower and increase the amount of tokens that they have by 20%, by 30%, by 40%, by 50%. In one of these times, they, will, they won't be able to pull this out, they will decrease the position heavily and they will underperform long term. I do care about the amount of tokens that I have. One thing I might be doing with my BOBA position is actually buying more if we would be seeing a deeper correction from these levels because it is my winner and I'm willing to double down on my winners at this stage. Following other strategies, so we have Ethereum layer 2s. Some people, they were buying Toshi when it was low, forming the thesis about base. Some people, they were aping into bread. I'm, I'm personally planning to ape into bread. I just don't think that right now risk reward in, is the best one, although long term it doesn't matter. I do understand that we should have Ethereum layer 2 season. I do understand that we should have airdrop of BLAST in May. BLAST is number 9 blockchain by total value locked already at this stage. The token is not even alive at this stage. It's so, so crazy. I'm buying a meme token, which is following the narrative of largest meme of this cycle, of largest new meme of this cycle, Pepe. I'm buying Andy on BLAST because it's yellow character on yellow blockchain woof exactly the same thing we have alex we have a character that's connected to pepper on woof let's see if it's not going to be a rug pull if it's a rug pull why alex foundation did not invest into this thing yet but still all of these tokens they would be receiving liquidity even from the tokens that are receiving all of the love from alex foundation and from the market as well because this is surging and we see and we see woof which is number six in this sequence pretty much correcting because of the fact that some people are selling the wolf in order to buy these tokens that avex foundation is actually holding themselves these five tokens these profits from them they would be coming into wolf as well wolf has the strongest narrative there too bread is my bet on base chain rido is my bet on toy chain sui i'm long in sui currently but after my thoughts in this video I'm honestly thinking on trying to enter my position into a blue chip meme token on the chain. Do you understand at this stage what is happening? Do you understand what my strategy is? Do you understand that I actually formed it in a bear market with a picture of the bear? And I'm actually following to position myself and to multiply my strategy in different blockchains, in different layer ones, in the ones that I'm actually most bullish on. I'm buying blue chip meme tokens on these chains with blue chip narrative mostly following the largest meme token of this cycle imagine how well i will be piggy backing pepe on each and every chain you might say that my thesis is quite weak in case pepe will not be doing well i will still have some things i will have Rido, i will have welsh on sex blockchain and in parallel i'm actually longing a bunch of layer ones and layer twos as well honestly i'm thinking on selling some of my under performance at this stage in order to add longs into layer ones or buy more of the blue chip meme tokens in some of the chains at this stage because i want to decrease the amounts of tokens that i have in my portfolio and i want to double down on my winners as well and i also want to focus i want to focus on some things with asymmetric upside that will provide me with crazy 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 returns this is the best strategy that you can actually use on the market it's proven already it will continue to work moving forward when you're buying blue chip meme token on the chain you're solving the question of exit liquidity you do understand that this chain will probably be bought by smart investors on the market because they're only buying tech projects because because they definitely think that crypto is not a scam and some people are actually developing something fucking bubble and they're thinking they're smart but some of this liquidity from them from them making profits on this chain they would still digging a bit into meme coins and retail that will like these chains 
they will also be entering meme coins on this chain because if you're buying a blue chip meme coin that you would be able to hold that, that's why i'm not buying a lot of stuff on solana because i'm not sure i would be able to hold them i think a lot of stuff there are just pump and dumps if you actually know some blue chips meme coins on solana just link them just just comment them on youtube because it might be interesting to check them out things that i'm buying into of course they're risky of course they're meme coins of course they can rock each and every time i'm willing to make these bets in expectations that I will have a chance to outperform i'm solving my exit liquidity issue because retail that would be coming in they will be buying into these meme coins at the same time i'm betting on winning l1s and l2s that i think should be winning moving forward now there are some chains that are not very very meme coin friendly things like maybe arbitrum things like maybe sui as well we will see what will be happening with them beauty of my boba bet is the fact that i i will essentially feel all right if any ethereum layer 2 will be winning as well because if any ethereum layer 2 will be winning ethereum will be winning as well pepper will be winning and my boba bag will be winning as well profits rotation from one narrative to another front running the herd it's a very very interesting topic as well honestly at this stage of the cycle i would not try to do that a lot the only thing that i'm doing myself is that when my longs are going up i'm actually taking out margin out from my longs and i'm using that margin to position myself into ecosystems that i think would be running quite soon same thing i've done with avex with my gaming token buy and with wolf buy and i'm doing with andy on blast as well i'm front running the masses when they will essentially eventually appear on these chains as well i think it might be great and it might be interesting to rotate from one thing to another if you would understand that you are at the end stage of the cycle it's going to be the last wave and you want to maximize the gains from your last wave pretty much i think at that time it would be quite nice to rotate if you would be planning to exit after you would be making profits from these rotations as well and not continue to rotate moving forward very important thing to understand as well last but not least pre-halving deep and correction understand amount of people sidelined so we do have this question that btc surging down currently and everything is correcting and it's it all it all does not feel great and we should have this pre-halving deep man i don't think it's going to be the large one i do think that this time is different because we do have all-time highs of btc before the actual halving imagine the amount of people who are sidelined at this stage and man a lot of them they're still just thinking well i will wait i will be able to buy back lower we will go to 55 we will go to 45 it's so so crazy they will never get the uh, they will never get the option to buy eventually they will basically just be buying higher and even at this stage there are some tokens that didn't pump much like arbitrum if you're smart you would be using the fat that is that's being created currently if you are not allocated into crypto at this stage if you have 80 percent of your portfolio in stable coins take all this money and buy arbitrum do nothing else you will be outperform a lot of people who would be playing market daily who are way early before you who were buying in the bear market just take all these stable coins, put them on Arbitrum, enter 3x leverage Arbitrum loan, 4x leverage Arbitrum loan, 5x leverage Arbitrum loan, and just wait. I can definitely say that you would be doing very, very well. If you still have this bias that, oh, like a lot of things, they grew so much and I will probably not have any option to enter the market at this stage. Well, this fight is just, it's just crazy to me. The things that are happening... Yeah, this space is just taking money out of people that that are here for the first cycle, right? They don't know a lot. So Solana Casino is probably one of the best things for that as well. But guys that are taking money from people on Solana, they should be rotating the profit somewhere as well. And the person who would be laughing the last is the one that we basically want to be as well. This is pretty much it in terms of the video. It's pretty large one, but yeah, I think it's packed with alpha actually. I like to see my strategy playing out. I like whales to be following my strategy as well. So, so interesting to be right. Even despite the fact, even considering the fact we are under correction currently and things like that. I think this year is definitely going to be a very, very interesting one.
It's not Solana, it's not a Solana casino, but it's still a casino. It's not much, but it's honest work. Let's gamble. We do have 201 accounts eligible for giveaway at this stage. Number 70 is the first winner. Very, very close to second time winner as well. Number 40, wow. 7040. Maybe something, maybe it's a hint on the price of Bitcoin, guys. And last 93. 93, 93. Second time winner. Wow. Very nice. We do already have two second time winners, and one of them is third time winner, which is very, very interesting. Well, this is it for this video. Zoom out. Think on zoom out. Think about long term. Don't try to protect 20, 30, 50, 60 percent downside. It's crypto. You knew what type of game you're trying to play. If you expect hundreds, tens of hundreds returns, you also have to expect 60, 50, 40 percent dips. It happens. Calm down. Everything is going to be all right. It's all fine. Don't make stupid decisions and stupid actions as well. Look on the guy who is losing a hundred thousand dollars each and every day right now. I'm very, very calm. I'm way calmer. I'm feeling way better than last week when we were at the tops. Because it shows me that we are not done yet. It's the healthiest thing that could have happened. Don't be salty that you could have taken all these profits and do something with that and things. Well, it obviously depends on your strategy. If you needed money, if you want to take profits, up to you. But I care about the amount of tokens that I have. I do understand that when I take profits, the amount of tokens that I have actually decreases. I'm waiting for later to take my profits. I was waiting for eight months on Bobo. I will be waiting for some more time as well. Number right now is irrelevant. Delete your portfolio application. It's irrelevant. Stop checking it. It's all going to be all right. Thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.